Welcome, everybody, to another episode of In the Divide, where we're bringing all things crypto together with Algorand. Great day out there. Hopefully, you're having a wonderful day. I need people to come in to the community. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. But most of all, comment down in the link in uh, the description if there's anything that you have a question and things that you want information on please let's be interactive um but let's start with this this here is gonna just be uh, a blanket thing because i've dealt with a lot of people um and in a lot of people are as much information as i give them people don't seem to be able to connect the dots. Now, I'm going to say this because I'm not a financial advisor. Um, I do this because I think that inherently there's some, some strong um, signals that Algorand will be uh, uh, one of the coins that will take off, especially as the bear market lets up. Now, this is me not telling you the bar bear market's going to let up anytime soon. There's too many factors in the economy that's going to cause things to go very slow. One is, you know, the election, the, the midterms and things of that nature. Nothing's really going to be solidified until sometime next year to we get some things turned around because even if someone does something good, it takes time uh, <clears throat> for some of the market factors to actually start signaling and turn around. But today we're talking about interoperability. I want you to understand how important that is to the building and the, um, the market capitalization of Algorand because it has been one of the um, coins has uh, been a later late arrival to the party, the Ethereum, the Solanos, um, some of the other ones uh, have um, a severe market advantage. Nobody's going to really quit their blockchain and come over to Algo uh, really because they're invested. You don't want to lose your invested. You're going to be tribalized. Uh, you're going to be a maximalist for your place. And I understand it because I'm, you know, as bad as I say Bitcoin maximalist is, I'm a little a bit of a maximalist myself when it comes to Algo. But I will not denigrate the, the greater um, system of um, cryptocurrency because I, I'm trying to pawn my, um, my, my interest over everything else. But this is what I need you to understand. Interoperability is the next phase of this whole algo uh, cryptocurrency thing actually um, having a better leg because you got all these different tribes, all these different things working independently trying to prove itself, okay? It's not a system. Okay, like the banking system, you have all these banks, they could be working separately, but they're not together. Until the system comes together and makes something more than itself, it's not going to be a financial system. It's not going to be a crypto system. And that's where we have to understand the next leg is going to be, because if the cryptocurrencies can actually operate like a financial system, where you have one doing this, and one doing this, and they both can speak to each other, that now creates creates not only a bigger market cap because you can't think of them only as a singular entity. You now have to start thinking of them as a, 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 I mean, a, as a multiple entity. Now you have to start operating with them as a singular entity. And that's eventually what we want because that's where regulation give us one rule. So everybody knows what to do. And that gives the market an instruction to understand that if this person does this with this technology, I'll bet on this. So interoperability is the next step. So I want you to, I wanted to do this for those who know and don't know. I'm going to share the screen here. So one of the first steps of interoperability on Algorand was Algomint, okay? It bridges um, uh, some Ethereum and a BTC 
to the Algorand blockchain. It's very simple, very rudimentary. It's not a whole lot of wheels to it. If you want to um, get a B, B, BTC or uh, ETH, all you're doing is converting them here. And you just convert. And you just that simple. So this is just step one. And this is just to get people to be able to from Algorand, invest in BTC and ETH. So one of the things is you're using the Algorand network to transact. So you're canceling out on a lot of the fees that was, you know, just inherently ruthless on some of the other changes, check the other um, blockchains. So as we go from there, we have another um, the blockchain bridge that just had started. This is the uh, <laughs> PTBTC. PT -BTC. So this is like a, um, another thing that um, can allow you to swap uh, for BTC. All right, BTC is a network which is over one, well, close to one trillion. So the benefit of having interoperability, it allows you to access another network that allows you to stay on your network where your network is secure, faster, and everything else like that. So you can transact by wrapping your coin in whatever um, chain you're going on. So that's the next level in securing uh, um, uh, money that can also possibly come back over because if you can get some those other blockchains to actually start having other people from their chain to cross over and introduce and work with our blockchain because it is cheaper to do transactions, it is secure, secure, more secure than what they're doing on their network. And most of the time, it's going to be uh, faster with a quicker finality when you're using Algorand blockchain. So this is uh, Algorand being in a position to do what it does best, is allowing its tech to be uh, uh, what speaks for it. So of course, Tiny Man is one of the first ones to actually bridge stuff. Uh, I still use Tiny Man, one of the best ones out there, and it bridges the BTC, I mean, the P, TBTC, you can buy Go ETH and uh, Go BTC directly from there through swaps. So that's great also. So the new one here, the new one, the new one, the new one, the London Bridge, the London Bridge. If you follow my channel, we, we talked about London Bridge um, probably a little time uh, late last year. This here is going to be, I think, um, the linchpin of, of our interoperability. Because like BTC, but like Bitcoin, Ethereum technology is outdated. The project is not outdated, but I'm just saying as far as the tech, as far as what it's able to do, it's limited when you um, compare it to uh, a technology like Algorand, okay? So if we can get people to actually use Algorand network and create that bridge, so these people who are on this Algorand, uh, on Ethereum has the ability to not only wrap their um, um, Ethereum in um, Algorand to actually um, move onto a secure uh, blockchain, they can actually make transactions uh, in in a better fashion, more cheaper, uh, and it, uh, it, they can do more business as far as taking and security, securing and actually doing multiple things with their, their uh, uh, Ethereum tokens, because if you're going to transact that on the Algorand blockchain, this becomes a more efficient way for you to do your work. I'm going to show you this because also with Bitcoin, that's why when they went to El Salvador, Bitcoin was the big name that they put on, okay? But Bitcoin is not something that you can transact on efficiently. 
That's why the El Salvador blockchain, the whole experiment is based on how it runs through Ethereum, how Ethereum's network is able to transact and be secure and also provide the uh, low fees for people who are low and have no income or low income to still be able to tr transact and, and be efficient. So these is what this is what this is also with the 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 London Bridge. If you can allow other people with the amount of fees and gas fees that come on Ethereum, and now you can come over and your your thing is still less than a penny per transaction, that allows more people access to Ethereum. Okay. And then that allows other people who want to do more transactions in a more cost effective way, then they can participate even more in the Ethereum blockchain. But guess what? The fees and transactions are going to be paid to Algorand because to do that and have the efficiency, you're going to wrap your Ethereum on Algorand. And that way, through those mechanisms, the transaction fees, the new users, the connections and all that other stuff, Algorand should be gain a significant uh, bump in their in their market cap. And if they can uh, make sure that the bridges are secure. See, that's the thing here, because usually bridges are points of contact for hackers. So if Algorand can really have these state proof lock in and be secure. This is a boom. Interoperability people. The last one, I was going to do this before, but uh, Data Finance is doing its bridge. And the reason I did this here, unfortunately here, the bridge for Solana, which is also a pretty cool thing. But if you've ever been on Solana blockchain, like I have, blockchain in Solana is known for not being the most reliable, okay? You'll get downtime, slow times, time, time it tells you to take a time out, go on lunch break, we'll, we'll see if we can run a little later. So it's not the most dependable blockchain, but that's why I think also it's a blockchain that we need to be connected with because people need, like I said, the trilemma comes back into effect. Security, okay, the the speed and the cost. I know other people have other trilemmas, but security, speed, and cost is what people mainly are looking for. And um if Algo can come on and allow people, and I don't think we can fix the network from where we are, but we can allow the people on Solana to always have, if they don't, if they have the downtime where they're down for a day, guess what? Come on to the Algo blockchain, do some things in Algo, and you still are not, you know, totally unable to do something because you're waiting for your blockchain to start back up. So it's a good way uh, even for uh, 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 Algorand to, to reach out to these other blockchains that have different, you know, mechanisms to where, you know, Ethereum is heavy with the, the NFTs and things like that. I think the best blockchain for in, in NFTs, even though I'm not really severely into NFTs, is Algorand because, of course, it's secure, it's not forking. And if it doesn't fork, that means guess what? That your NFT is secure. If your NF your, your thing forks and you got a unique NFT, if it forks, it's not unique anymore. You lost the value, a lot of value. So I'm just here with this interoperability little path in line to let you know once these things happen, I need us as a community to start to try to get some things into these other blockchains, start try to get some of these algos into other blockchains. So people who are unaware and like what are these, what are these um these um XOs and what is this wrapped wrapped uh Solano? What is that and then what they can do is they can get curious and come over to our DeFi 
and look at some of the things and can start investing in some of the projects that we have. AlgoFi, PacFi, Guard. We have some good things that we have, have uh, all over here. And I'm telling you now, if you've never been to another blockchain, some of the ease of purpose, some of the ease of, of using some of this software is so much better on Algorand. It's not funny. This Glitter Finance is a bit wonky, but like I said, if you've ever been into another blockchain, you can get some very complicated, convoluted things that is just, just mind blowing. But that's the video, people. Interoperability. I need y'all to be in a position when these come in line. I need y'all to be in a position to test them. Test other blockchains. Wrap your algo. Let algo be on other blockchains so people can understand. And what happens is algo is going to have things over there where you're investing. And we need those investment funds to go over there so we can bring people over here. Because the more they see algo, the more they'll be curious to say, let me try that. And the more and more, I know people will be on to Algorand. If you want your investment to bubble, send it out there as a community, as your thing, as your right, as a as a as a as a lay ambassador, liaison. We need to end these other communities <clears throat> because Algorand is the one that's going to transform the future. Without any further ado. I hope that with this information, I gave you some hope. I gave you something to think about, something to hold your backs. And this is me, Sam Houston, hoping that your tomorrows are going to be greater than your today. And we're out.